Let's watch this. On the 21st of June, 2007, Caitlin Lasseter... Oh, God, Kentucky Kingdom. Dude, I used to live, like, within driving distance from that place. ...and her two friends were enjoying a day out at Kentucky Kingdom when the unthinkable happened. Whilst riding the drop tower ride known as the Superman Tower of Power, the ride malfunctioned, resulting in horrific consequences that would change Caitlin's life forever. Have you guys ever rode one of these? There was one at Orlando, but I didn't go on it. No way, dude. No way. The investigation into the incident shone a light on a multitude of failures, showing the disaster could have been completely avoided. But what happened that day? And what happened to Caitlyn? Let's talk about it. This is the infamous Superman Tower of Power disaster. Yeah, they had one in Orlando. Caitlin and her I'm family gone. resided in Germantown, Kentucky, around two and a half hours from Kentucky Kingdom. Germantown is a neighborhood in Louisville, known for its German heritage and quaint urban setting. She lived with her parents, Brandy and Monique Lasseter, and attended Highland Middle School, where she was described as being well liked and sporty. One student at Highland Middle School said, There's like the popular group, and she was in that, and I knew her pretty well. But Yo, my the sister preps, was dude. one of her best friends. You guys remember, man? What type of kid were you in school? I was a goth. <laughs> oh, I think I just cr did I just cringe. In high school, I had like spiky hair. I would like spike my hair up every morning. Yo, let me tell you, man. I don't know how I had the motivation to do that, man. That's insane. Spiking my hair like that every single morning. Bro, that took like 30 minutes to do that. I had to wake up like an hour before school just to spike my hair. Another student named Austin said, She's a fun person. Very cool, just a fun person to hang out with. Caitlin had just recently turned 13, and her parents were granting her more freedoms, which she was thrilled about. And on June the 21st, 2007, Caitlin had planned on going to Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville with two of her close friends. Man, that roller coaster looks fun. Now, normally I would be scared of this, actually. But after I overcame my fear on Velocipaster, I have this, like, weird... I'm very interested now in roller coasters. Caitlin had planned on going to Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville with two of her close friends. She was beyond excited, and when that Thursday rolled around, Randy and Monique dropped Caitlin off at Kentucky Kingdom, not knowing that theirs and Caitlin's life was about to change forever. Kentucky Kingdom is a popular theme park located in Louisville, Kentucky, and it first opened its doors on May the 22nd, 1987. The park spans 67 acres, has a water park, and features a variety of attractions including roller coasters, thrill rides, and entertainment. Some of these rides include the Lightning Run, a steel roller coaster known for its steep drops and intense airtime, the Thunder Run, a wooden roller coaster which opened in 1990, making Dude, ain't no way I'm riding this ship. Dude, look at this roller coaster. There's no way this is like safe. You can get one of the park's oldest coasters, and of course, the Superman Tower of Power. Kentucky Kingdom was previously owned by the popular theme park chain Six Flags, and in 1995, they debuted a new one-of-a-kind ride known as the Elevator, which would later be renamed the Superman Tower of Power. The Tower of Power was a drop ride which involves a vertical ascent followed by a sudden freefall drop. Mm -hmm. Riders are typically seated in a gondola, which is lifted to the top of a tall tower or structure using a system of cables, chains, or hydraulics. Once at the top, the gondola is released, allowing gravity to pull it down at a high speed. High strength steel cables are integral to both the ascent and descent phase of the attraction. Oh the cables lift the gondola God. to the top of the tower for a smooth ascent and secure it for the drop. During the descent, oh. they regulate the speed. Oh, dude, I got a feeling in my like stomach just watching that. Speed. Riders would take a seat in one of the four carriages affixed to the tower. They were then launched 177 feet into the air at 12 miles per hour held there for several seconds, and then plunged down around 154 feet at 54 miles per hour to the bottom. The ride was manufactured by Liechtenstein-based company Intamin. Intamin, short for International Amusement Installations, is a leading manufacturer of amusement rides and roller coasters, headquartered in Skjern, Liechtenstein. On that day, Caitlin and her friends had already been on a few rides before going on the Superman Tower of Power. They went on the ride once and had no problems. When they got off, they noticed the queue for the ride was small. As they enjoyed the ride so much, they decided to go on the ride again, a decision that would change Caitlin's life forever. They got onto the ride, sat down, 
and it set off. As the girls approached the top, the seat began shaking violently. Immediately, the group knew something was wrong and began to scream. Caitlin would go on to state, As we started to go up, we were laughing about something, and then it is almost as if it jolted a little bit or something, like a whipping sound. During this shaking, a rope snapped hitting Caitlin which busted her lip. The group were now screaming for the ride operator to stop and do something, but nothing was done. She said, We looked up, and there were a bunch of cables falling, and this was only about 20 feet off the ground. It kept going up, and at that point, I had cables all over what my body. The fuck? There was a cable hanging below me. They were cables all over my friends. Dude, so they could have stopped it. I was originally thinking that maybe when they got all the way up to the top, as it dropped, the cable snapped, right? So there would have been no way for the operator to know. Thinking quickly, Caitlin removed one of the cables from her torso. She remembered the moment as the ride began the descent. She said, My lip was busted, I had cuts all over me, and I was bleeding and freaking out. I remember smoke and the smell of burning. I felt like I was going to die. We kept screaming stop the ride. People were frantically freaking out. I remember something else fell on us, which was more cable. We even had cables around our necks, and we pulled them off. Something hard hit our head, and then we dropped. During the fall, one of the ropes had wound its way around both of Caitlin's feet. This shattered her left femur and severed both of her feet as they plummeted to the bottom. Her feet had now been completely cut off from the ankles below. According to one newspaper, as the car climbed, the operator heard the cable snap and heard screaming, but didn't hit the emergency stop button in time. He hit it just before their descent, meaning that the locks on the ride were now stuck in place, oh, which meant that Caitlin shit. was now trapped in her seat. Emergency services were on the scene almost immediately, and once she was taken out of the seat, she was transported to UL Hospital. Caitlin was in a bad way, but she was stable. At the hospital, the doctors were able to reattach Caitlin's right foot, but her left foot was too badly damaged to restore and had to be amputated below the knee. Miraculously, Caitlin survived. The ride was then closed until further notice, never to be reopened again, as it was demolished a year later in 2008. An investigation into the incident was launched immediately, and it wasn't long until they found their answers. According to investigators, multiple elements converged to create a disaster, but the cable itself snapped due to fatigue and deterioration over time. The report did show, however, that it was scientifically impossible to tell how long the cable had been in bad shape, or to pinpoint one specific cause for the wire to snap. One of the experts brought in to examine the cable said it had likely deteriorated gradually. It but that doesn't like it should have been checked it just wasn't maintained okay the fact that they reattached one of her feet is insanely impressive considering that it it like the cable right it like literally cut her both her feet off it's crazy to me that they could just like reattach a body part i i, I guess is what i'm trying to say hmm. i believed if they were regularly maintained like the theme park claim they were they should have been able to spot it in a deposition following the accident john smith the park's ride maintenance manager since 1999, revealed the technicians for the theme park never did a hands-on examination on any of the 10 cables on the ride before wow. the tragedy and never brought it to his attention. He claimed, How can you have a job that involves people's lives and not take it serious? Okay, so I had a job one time that was insanely important. When I worked at FedEx, uh, I used to be a ramp agent. And one of the responsibilities of a ramp agent, you have to verify the weight and balance of an aircraft. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, the weight and balance of an aircraft is insanely important because there's a lot of like there's a lot of different factors you have to consider. You can't just fill up an airplane. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. You have to have specific weight in specific places. Okay, and then you also have to balance that with the fuel that's on the wings. There's a lot of thought process that goes into it, okay? If you don't like take it seriously and you f it up or if you're lazy and you mess that weight and balance up, you can literally cause an aircraft to, to crash. So when I was a ramp agent, one of my responsibilities was at the end of the night, at the end of the flight, I had to verify that weight and balance. Now, typically, if there was ever like an error, you just call the paperwork ramp agent, you explain the error, you talk about it and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 there's just a zero here. Let's move the decibel. Everything checks out, you know. Those those mistakes happen, but you have to check on it. Okay, you can't just have a container that weighs twelve thousand pounds be weighed in as twelve hundred. You know, there's a big difference there. So anyway, my point being is that 
to a certain extent, I have been in the position where my job literally like people's lives were at stake. Okay. My man at stake sounds so dramatic. You guys know what I mean? Like basically if I up, bad shit can happen. That's just my point. Okay. So how is a technician on a ride where you're constantly putting people in danger? Because when you're all the way up here, you are in danger. When you're on a roller coaster, you are in danger. It's just the amount of safety precautions and shit outweighs the danger. You know, it protects you, you know, for the most part, And let it, but you have to keep it up. So what I'm saying is if you're in the position where lives are at stake and you don't take your job seriously, then please quit. Please stop. Like, just don't work there. You know what I did? I stepped down as a ramp agent because one, the pay was not good enough. And two, I didn't like being in charge of that for only, okay, yeah, so yeah, so let me tell you about this. Yeah, guess how much I made? Guess how much I made for verifying the weight and balance of an aircraft? Guess how much I made per hour? I made $16.50. $16.50 an hour. For verifying the weight and balance of an aircraft. I stepped down. I don't want to do it anymore. And these inspections were part of the guidelines and that they should have been done every day. Smith also stated that the park did not lubricate the cables on a daily basis. In short, there were a series of failures and this incident could have been completely avoided. In the aftermath, the park was fined $1,000. And in response to the tragedy, the Kentucky General Assembly passed a state legislation prohibiting most high school students from running theme park thrill rides as the ride operator that day was only 18 years old. The Lassiter family then sued Kentucky Kingdom for negligence and a settlement was reached for an undisclosed fee. It was claimed in the J. Beasley report that the settlement would provide lifetime care for Caitlin. Okay, okay. In other words, they would be paying her for the rest of her life. Okay. In another twist, okay. The owner of Kentucky Six Flags sued Intamin, the ride designer, claiming they were to blame for the disaster. Of course, they didn't win their suit. Rides all over the world similar to the Superman Tower of Power. That's not the manufacturer's problem at all. The ride worked. The ride clearly worked. It's not the creator's fault if it wasn't maintained. Or were checked and made sure they were maintained up to standard. Five months after the accident, Caitlin's parents told the media, to watch our daughter continually try to overcome such extreme pain and adversity has definitely been five of the most trying months of our lives. After enduring months of pain and surgery, Caitlin began walking with the help of a prosthetic leg and went on to tell reporters at Capitol Hill, this accident has affected my life dramatically. If I would have died for some reason, I feel it would have just been passed on, but I'm alive and I fought and I'm here today. Now we're going to change it and make it safer. In some brilliant news, Caitlin's replanted foot regained. Like whenever people go through these things, I think it's amazing that they come out like, you know, really strong individuals, you know, strong, strong people. But I always think to myself, why did it have to come to this? Like, why did someone have to get their legs chopped off for them to be like, oh, you know what? Maybe we should maintain it. Like <laughs> shit like this that is preventable is always just so disappointing because it's like, bruh, this didn't even have to happen. Motor and sensory function, meaning today it is fully functional. It is clear oh, that wow, okay. I'm alive okay. and I fought and I'm here today. Now we're going to change it and make it safer. In some brilliant news, Caitlin's replanted foot regained motor and sensory function, meaning today it is fully functional. That's insane. It's clear that Caitlin is a remarkable woman who against adversity and pain for every step of the way to get where she is now. In recent years, Caitlin has kept out of the limelight and has not made many appearances in the media, which I don't blame her for. If she does somehow come across this video, I hope she's found peace, happiness, and all of this is a distant memory. Yeah, that's really good. As she always, like regained all of her channel. function and myself. the leg that they reattached. And if you appreciate my work, subscribe. And if you want to go the extra step to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a member. I'm not sure if it's true. Yeah, that I was good. Caitlin that was a really good a video. ICU nurse. What an amazing woman. Let me know what you think about her case that was in the good. comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.